through the mist by the milk light of moon. All that was lost is revealed. Our long bygone burdens, miracles of the spring. But where have we come? And where shall we end? If dreams can't come true, then why not pretend? How the gentle wind beckons through the leaves as autumn colors fall. Dancing in a swirl of golden memories, the loveliest lives of all. Somewhere, lost in the clouded annals of history, lies a place that few have seen, a mysterious place called the unknown, where long forgotten stories are revealed to those who travel through the wood. The scenery now fades to the forested depths of the unknown, with Wirt and Greg walking as the latter rambles. Antelope, Guggenheim, Albert, Salami, Jiggly, Jumpy, Tom, Thomas, Tambourine, Legface, McCullen, Artichoke, Penguin, Pete, Steve. But I think the very worst name for this frog is. Wait, wait a second. Uh, Greg, where are we? In the woods. I mean, what are we doing out here? We're walking home. Greg, I, I think we're lost. We should have left a trail or something. I can leave a, ca a trail of candy for my pants. No. Though I'm lost, my wounded heart resides back home in pieces, strewn about the graveyard of my lost love, for only... Axe chopping in the distance. Do you hear that? Yeah. Both brothers peek around the tree. Do you think it's some kind of the range lunatic with an axe waiting out there in the darkness for innocent victims? Greg runs further into the woods. Greg! Greg, you're going to get us into trouble again. A stranger, soon known as the woodsman, mm -hmm. singing incoherently mm -hmm. while gathering. Mm -hmm. You should ask him for help. No, we should not ask him for help. But, shh, you shh, you shh, shh. The woodsman leaves into another area of the forest. Should, you think we should ask him for help? A bluebird on a branch looks down at them. Hey, maybe I can help you. I mean, you guys are lost, right? What in the world is going on? Well, you're slapping yourself and I'm answering your question and... No, Greg, uh, a verse brain isn't big enough for cognizant speech. Hey, what was that? I mean, I, I'm just saying you're, you're weird, like not normal. I, I mean, oh my gosh, stop talking to it, word. It? What are you doing here? Explain yourselves. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. The bluebird flies away. Um, calm down, mister. Uh, whatever you do here is your business. We, we just want to get home with all our legs and arms attached. These woods are no place for children. Don't you know the beast is afoot here? The beast? We don't know anything about that. We're just two lost kids trying to get home. Well, welcome to the unknown, boys. You're more lost than you realize. Cut to a shot of the grist mill. We cut inside the living room where the woodsman, Wart, and Greg take refuge. I found this homestead abandoned and repurposed its mill for my needs. You and your brother should be safe here while I work. Candy trail, candy trail, candy trail. 
What is your work exactly? Everyone has a torch to burn. And this here is mine. I grind the horrid Edelwood trees into oil to keep this lantern lit. Breaks this, is Edelwood. My life. this is my burden. This guy sounds loony. Maybe we should make a break for it if we can, but he must know the woods really well. So may we may need to knock him out first, except that that might turn out really badly, huh? Yeah, bad, bad plan. Um, forget it, forget it, bad plan. Okay. What are you boys whispering about? We're talking about running away out of here. Shh, 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 shh. Leave if you wish, but remember the beast haunts these woods ever singing his mournful melody in search of lost souls such as yourself. To help us? No, not to help you. I have work to do in the mill. When I'm finished, I will do what I can to guide you, if you're still here when I return. It's the living room into the mill. Huh. I guess we could just live. But, uh, I don't know, Greg? What? Do you think there really is a beast out there? Or is, is that guy just messing with us? Uh-huh. I mean, he could have gone away with us by now if that was his plan. And he lit that fire. That's pretty nice. Yeah. I think that's, it's possible there's a beast since there, since there was a talking bird, but... Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm just like a boat upon a winding river, twisting towards an endless black sea, further and further away from where I want to be, who I want to be. Oh, I didn't know that. Did you know if you soak a raisin in grape juice, it turns into a grape? It's a rock fact. Oh, you're not helping at all. Why don't you go play with your frog or something? Oh, beans, where is that frog of mine? Hold on there, second brother of mine. I'll be back soon for your plan. Greg throws some more candy around before exiting the building while Word stares at the ceiling. Cuts to Greg outside the mill. Kitty, now where did that frog named Kitty go? Oh, tripped on my own candy trail. Animalistic growling in the distance towards... <laughs> hmm? walks a bit toward the noise with a pause. Then a rivet sounds comes from the mill. Greg looks back, smiling. That frog's giving me the runaround. Walks back, throwing candy around, carelessly. Greg grunts some as he shimmies on top of a barrel just in front of a window on the mill and peeks inside. Kitty? From rivet. Inside the mill, the woodsman hums indistinctly and grinds branches of needlewood into oil, that of which he bottles for use. Gross. Ribbit. Kitty? More growling from the woods. Ooh. Is that? Oh, there you are. Ribbit. Growling Ribbit. continues, growing closer over the course of a few seconds of pause. Where? Kitty? A dog with piercing eyes peeks into the barrel and continues its growling. You have beautiful eyes. Screeching sounds as the dog unhinges its jaw, then hard cut to inside the gristmill's living room. Greg? A clattering sound from the next room, hurried footsteps, and the woodsman enters. What's happening? Where's your brother? Uh, uh, huh? Greg Bays stumbles into the mill with barrel pieces on him. Oh, holy moly, hot dog! Greg is knocked back to a flight of stairs by the dog's entrance. It's the beast! Stay back, boys. This creature, which is known as... Greg knocks the hat off the woodsman's head with a piece of wood. Huh? Then stumbles, steps, and breaks the ceramic bird sculpture on the floor and falls unconscious onto a log. Greg, why did you do that? That was the plan, remember? Knock him out. No, uh, bad plan. The dog stalks towards Wirt, who uses the fireplace gate as a shield. 
I told you to forget that plan. Ah! Greg spanks the dog with the handle of the woodsman's axe. Spank, spank, spank. Run, 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 run. Candy camouflage. Greg throws candy in the air, grabs his frog, and follows Wart. Run, 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 run. The oil-covered dog follows, breaking through the mill door, and gets stuck under a gear while pursuing Wart. Greg, this is amazing, huh? The dog comes free. Wart spots a sack of potatoes nearby and throws a few at the dog before tossing the entire sack at it. Am I supposed to throw something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the dog eats the sweets. He's eating your candy? I wonder if he ate my whole candy trail that led to this mill. Oh, Greg, you let the beast ride to us with your candy. The dog flips over the platform Wart and Greg stood on. The topple platform separates Wart and Greg from the dog. Hey, give me the axe. You're too little to have it anyway. I, we gotta, we, we gotta get out of here. Greg points toward a ladder, which the brothers use to reach the roof of the mill. The dog bursts through the roof in pursuit. Uh, Greg, uh, give him the rest of your candy. Greg searches his pants, but no candy remains. He spots the piece he put on Wart's cape earlier and throws it off the roof to the water wheel. Whoops. The dog jumps off after it and spits out a black turtle from the force of the water wheel on its body. The whole mill falls apart and Wart and Greg fall into the river nearby. Wart surfaces and reaches land with the ax in hand. He watches the regurgitated turtle walk away with the candy still stuck to its shell. Hey, Wirt, look! Greg? Wirt, he spit out that turtle and now he's my new best friend. Hey, where are you going? The dog ambles off. Ain't that just the way? The mill is destroyed! The oil all gone! But, but, but look! We, we got the beast problem solved. The dog! That is not the beast! The beast cannot be mollified like some farmer's pet. He stalks like the night. He sings like the four winds. He is the death of hope. He steals the, their children, and he'll kill ruin. You're always messing up, Greg. Boy, you have it backwards. You are the elder child. You are responsible for you and your brother's actions. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe I, I can fix it. I can't fix it. You must go. Take your brother north. Look for a town. Yeah, thanks. Come on, Greg. One last thing. Beware the unknown. Fear the beast. And leave these woods. If you can, it is your burden to bear. Right. Yeah, uh, got it. And you, little one, you look after that frog and give it a proper name. Okay. Wart and Greg cross the river, and the scene pans up, then transitions to the brothers walking through the moonlit forest. Hey, Wart, I think you thought of a new name for a frog. I'm going to call him Wart. That's going to be really confusing. No, I'm going to call you Kitty. What? Maybe I'll start calling you Candy Pants. <laughs> yeah, good one, Wart. <laughs> Thanks. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to Wart. Chapter two, hard times at the Huskin Bee. In the thick of the woods come Wirt, Greg, and Greg's frog. All three of them come into view through the mist. It's almost morning. We should have found a town by now. This is the way the woodsman told us to go, right? Have you listened to anything I've been saying? For the last couple of hours, I've been saying, <coughs> Well, that settles it. I'm gonna walk up 10 feet ahead of you. Ow! Huh? I'm stuck. I hear something. Hmm. It's, a sign. it's probably nothing. Hey, look, Pottsfield, one mile, a town. Let's go this way. All right, let's go this way. Greg goes the opposite way. Not. <sighs> Greg approaches a bush. Hello? Hello? Hey, you. Who, me? Yeah, 
are you? Greg approaches the bush and peeks inside to see Beatrice tangled in vines, struggling. Oh, hello. It's you again. I'm stuck. Help me out of here and I'll owe you a favor. Whoa, I get a wish? No, 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 not a wish. I'm not magical. I'll just do you a good turn. Can you turn me into a tiger? Uh, no. I just said I'm not magical. It doesn't have to be a magical tiger. Greg, stop talking to Abosh. Okay. Greg proceeds to free Beatrice from the bush one-handed, who flies above them. Ah. Oh, thanks. I owe you a favor. So, um... You two are lost kids with no purpose in life, right? Uh Uh-huh. How about I bring you to Adelaide of the Pasture, the good woman of the woods? She can help you get home. Ooh. No, 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 no. Magic, talking birds, leading us to a fairy godmother in a mysterious... I'm going to Pottsfield. Yeah, we're going to Pottsfield. Come on. What about the favor? I'll think of my wish later. Okay, so let's small talk. My name is Greg. What's yours? Beatrice. My brother's name is Word. Who cares? And my frog's name is Word Jr., but that might change. Okay, that's great. How about you and I ditch your brother? Mm, Maybe later. So is it nice being a bird? Nope. Oh. Do you like waffles? No, uh, waffles make me sick. I eat maggots. Ugh. What? How can you not eat waffles? Squashing the sound. No. What? I stepped on a pumpkin. Aha. Uh-huh. Ward stands with his arms up, triumphant, facing their view of the path leading straight to a rural farming village. Civilization. See? Now. Squashing sound. Uh, what the... Wart also stepped on a pumpkin. All right, let's rejoin society. The group approaches the town. Wart leads the group, walks between an alley, between the horse and a lo- house and a log cabin. Hello? Hello? Mm, see anybody? Mm, no. Oh, I see you. Yeah, I see you too, Greg. Hey, not to be obnoxious, but an abandoned ghost town doesn't seem like it's going to be that useful getting you guys home. There's got to be somebody. Port approaches the front door, left of Dar. Somewhere. Excuse me, anyone here? He slowly pulls the door open and it creaks. Hello? Inside the house is a sitting area. On the gingham cloth table is a turkey with its head down. The turkey lifts its head with a fleshy noise. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm looking for a... I'm sorry. Wart leaves. Did you find anything? Nope. Where's Greg? Do you hear that? Huh? A vocal chanting melody starts up in the background from a barn down the road. The brothers gasp at each other, and the group all approach the barn. Inside, a group of pumpkin people are dancing around a maypole with a giant pumpkin head up top in shadow. Another pumpkin villager approaches from behind. What the? Oh, pardon me there. Hey. You folks ought to don your vegetables and celebrate the harvest with us. Oh, oh, you're wearing costumes. Well, sure. Pumpkins can't move on their own, can they? (laughs) No, yeah, no. Good thing I didn't take this off. Greg takes his foot with the pumpkin stuck on it. You guys find this place as creepy as I do, right? So it's some kind of weird cult where they wear vegetable costumes and dance around a big thing. They seem nice enough. Okay, you're in the now. That's fine. But I'm just saying something feels off about this place. Well, maybe I can find someone here who'll give us a ride home. Greg, you stay out of trouble. Beatrice, thank you, but you can leave. I can't leave. I'm honor bound to help you since you guys helped me. That's the bluebird rules. 
Huh. Okay. Beatrice, would you care for this dance? Greg approaches the dance floor, trying to drag Beatrice with him. No thanks, no thanks, no thanks. Uh, I said no thank you. Hey, aren't you a little too early? What do you mean? I mean, it doesn't seem like you're ready to join us yet. Join you? Uh, yeah, no, I'm just passing through. Folks don't tend to pass through Pottsfield. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's nice here. Hmm. I'm really just looking to leave here as fast as possible. Uh, what? What was that? Leave Pottsfield? Who would want to leave Pottsfield? What? You have to leave? To leave Pottsfield? Oh, are we leaving already? Let's leave immediately. I'm just trying to get home. We're to be You're not supposed to be here. Here to steal our crops. Ruin, Ruin our, our party. Or take off our pumpkin shoes. Uh, no, I, uh... There's a deep chuckle from above. <laughs> and Wirt's nervous smile falls as he looks up in shock. <laughs> the maypole and its pumpkin head, Enoch, starts talking and lowers his pumpkin face to look at the group as he talks. Well now, hold on everybody. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Enoch, what shall we do with them? Uh, I'm done. Well now, let's see here boys. How'd you end up in this little town of ours? Well, we were trying to get home. We came to town from the woods. Uh, we saw your farms and your houses and thought, hey, here's a normal place with normal people. And we both stepped on pumpkins. Yeah, and then we heard the music from the barn and well, um, how about we just leave? <laughs> now let me get this straight. You come to our town, you trample our crops, you interrupt our private engagement, and now you want to leave? Uh, yes. You'll never convict, you have no proof. Gramps Villager brings a struggling Beatrice forward. This one's trying to escape. Go, I don't know these clowns. Children, it saddens me that you do not wish to stay here with us, particularly because I simply have to punish you for your transgressions. Don't do this place with bad news. So, by the order of the Pottsfield Chamber of Commerce, I find you guilty of trespassing. Destruction of property, disturbing the peace, and murder. M murder? Oh, no, not murder, but for those other crimes. I sentence you to a few hours of manual labor. Wait, what? Really? That's it? Montage of them doing manual labor. The boys are seen in an empty stretch of barren land bordering the fields. They're digging deep ditches with Greg's frog by Greg and Beatrice by Wirt. Ha! Huh. Just a few hours of manual labor and we're almost done. And then what are you gonna do? Just wander around this way and that way through the woods forevermore? Um, maybe we'll just stay in Pottsfield. It's nice here. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know. Why do they even have you digging these holes? Planting seeds or something? Maybe they're gonna bury you out there. Hey, buried treasure. Oh, really? See, Beatrice? What do you find? A skeleton. Oh, we're digging our own. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, I was wrong all along. I, I didn't know how to get us home. Use your little feet to pick our locks. Oh, oh now you want my help. I want your help, but... The music turns to a funeral march with a trumpet and snare drum. Wart looks up to see a procession pass the field with four white flags. Enoch manning the parade tied up to the frontmost flags. Okay, yes, I want your help, Beatrice. Serious. Your time is up. Them holes been dug? Uh, yeah? Splendid. Well then. But, but no. No. Uh. 
Yeah. Um... Court looks down. Beatrice is using a tiny bird-sized shovel to bang against her ball and chain with her beak. It's falling. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, we were digging and there were too many rocks. You guys don't like rocks, right? I don't think we do. No, we don't like rocks. Beatrice, freed from her ball and chain, hurries over to Greg's ditch to free him. See, so we were like, we should get rid of these rocks. Well, that's a good idea. Right? Yeah, so we're getting rid of the rocks and... Weren't notice as Beatrice and Greg running. Huh, what? They left me. So what happened to the rocks? Uh, the rocks. A skeleton climbs out of the ditch Greg dug with two femurs in each hand. Uh, yeah, they, they were, um, you know, they... They got into the way of all and well, the dirt, you know, and uh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> welcome back, Larry. He looks exactly the same. What team that the skeleton makes a show of putting a jack o' lantern over its skull, then jumps into a gourd for the torso and sticks its limbs out. Woo! Yeah, Larry. Another skeleton climbs out of the ditch. The skeleton approaches a villager who offers it a jack-o'-lantern. Edward, this one's for you. They're all skeletons. Thanks for digging up the life of the party. Ah, what a wonderful harvest. And what about you? You sure you want to leave? Me? Yes. Oh, well, you'll join us someday. Huh. Why are you still here? What do you mean? You guys left me. Beatrice gestures a wing to point at her ankle. Wart looks at his own ankle, and it's revealed the ball and chain was broken off of him this whole time. Huh. Come on. Cut to the woods, where Greg and Greg's frog are sitting on the ground, moving their arms in sync up and down while Greg hums happily. Beatrice sits on Greg's teapot hat and looks back to where Wirt is hurriedly running into view. Uh, are they chasing us? No, nope. nope. I thought you guys. You're welcome. Thank you. I guess we're even now, huh? You're not honor bound to help us out anymore. I wish, but you weren't actually in any danger with those weirdos. Oh, yeah. Then you still have to help us get home. I got it. I wish Wirt Jr. had fingernails so he could play the guitar better. So, yeah, I'll bring you guys to Adelaide. I mean, that's where I'm going anyway. Why are you going to Adelaide? The group starts off deeper into the forest. I guess in some ways I'm trying to get home too. Hmm, that's vague. What does that mean? I don't have to tell you anything. Well, I sure hope Adelaide is more helpful than that woodsman was. I think his directions were not very good. Chapter three, School Town Follies. Wart, Greg, and Beatrice walk down a path through the forest. Greg walks along a lone stone wall singing. Don't know who she is or where she is or why she is or where she goes. To Adelaide, to Adelaide, come on and join the Adelaide parade. No. Adelaide, to Adelaide, let's go to Adelaide's house. I need to fix that last part, but that's the idea. So Beatrice using the high part, and then we're using the really high part. What? Oh. And. Stops to tie his shoe. Nobody is singing anything anymore, and we're, keep moving. But I, I have to, uh, uh, all right. But we have to do something fun. You know, we really don't. We can just keep walking silently, you know, and... Beatrice turns. Wart has stopped to tie his shoe again. Wart, let's go, come on. Sorry, sorry. But shouldn't we... Craig... Don't you want to be more like your brother, just always doing what you're told? Huh? 
just a pathetic pushover who relies on others to make his decisions. Hey, what? I'm not a pushover. Hold on, Wirt. Let me get to my point. Fine. See, Greg, no willpower whatsoever. Ugh. You need to be more like that. That doesn't really sound that fun. The world is a miserable place, Greg. Life isn't fun. Then I'll do what I need to do, I guess. Thank you. We'll just focus on getting you guys to Adelaide so I can wash my hands clean of this whole affair. And if you could pick up the pace a bit, that'd be great, okay? Okay? Beatrice turns. Greg has vanished. Where's Greg? Uh, uh, wander off, I guess. Cheese and crackers. Greg walks through the woods. <sighs> we need to do our part to make the world a better, better place. We're <laughs> Yeah. A bell tolls. Oh, huh, whoa. Greg sees a small schoolhouse in a clearing by a river. School? Not today. He runs off into the woods. Greg. Wirt runs up to the school. Greg? Greg? He looks in the door of the schoolhouse. Greg? Excuse me. Please take your seat, children. You're late. You know the rules. Once the bell has rung, class has begun. Oh, sorry, everybody. Sorry. No, he doesn't have a brain. He can't learn anything. Let's go, Bert. Come on. Here, boy. What? Did you say something? I can't hear you because I'm too busy doing what I'm told. Bert goes and sits in the desk. What? What do you... No, no, let's go. Oh, no. See, I'm a pushover, remember? I have to do what she tells me to do. Uh, Bert, your, your brother could be in trouble somewhere. Craig knocks on the window and waves. Bluebirds have a short lifespan. You two are literally killing me. Every moment I am forced to spend with you. Huh. Young man, I will not stand for such nonsense in my classroom. I got enough nonsense from that no good, two time and low down, a handsome man of mine. Oh, Jimmy. Dramatic piano music plays. The lights dim. Oh, Jimmy Brown, why did you have to leave me so? And now, with my father threatening to close the school and that wild gorilla on the loose, why, Jimmy, I just have one thing to say. A is for the apple that he gave to me, but I found a worm inside. B is for beloved that I called to him before. Oh, this lady's got some baggage. What's that? Young man, go to the dunce box. Oh, sure. Okay. No, no. Sure. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Word comes happily and sits in the dunce box. Mm -hmm. uh, now, where were we? Oh, yes. G is for the gentleman I thought he was when he first said hi, H-I. Craig sits outside on a fallen tree with various animals, all wearing clothes. So my theory is that hot dogs are not actually dogs, regardless of what they teach you in school. But you guys don't go to school, huh? I'm going to stick with you guys. A raccoon throws a black turtle into the river. Greg laughs. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Let's play Two Old Cat. Do you guys know how to play Two Old Cat? It's fun. I'll show you. Greg runs and searches under the schoolhouse. Hey, here's one old cat. A deer grabs a bespectacled, droopy-faced cat wielding a cane. It growls weakly. You found another one. Wait, no, I think, I think that cat's too old. Sorry, kitty. We'll have to find another old cat. Hey, Jeffrey, I think there's one behind you. Raspy breathing comes from a nearby bush. Possum moves the branches and a giant gorilla leaps up and roars. Ah! Gorilla, run! 
back in the schoolhouse, Miss Langtree is now laying on the floor, singing in despair. And why, yes, why, is the question that's on my mind. Oh, why? A dunce. This is dreadful. Good. I'm glad you feel that way. Mm. The school bell tolls. Huh? Gorilla! Outside, Greg and his animals are ringing the bell as the gorilla roars. Meal time already? Well, come along, children. Quart exits the dunce box. The gorilla chases Greg and the animals. We don't want to be late for mealtime. My father will be visiting today and will need to be on our best behavior. Quick, in Bring here. The schoolhouse door and waves the animals in. Cut to the schoolhouse dining room. Oh boy, mealtime. This is way better than being chased by a gorilla. The possum sniffs the food, takes a bite, and groans. Oh, what's the matter? Mm, kind of bland. Hey, nobody ordered you to eat yet. Yeah, but... Mm. Mm. Hey, I know what to do. Here, Miss Langtree, play something like this. Greg slams his fists on the piano keys. Oh, like this? Oh, potatoes and molasses. If you want some, oh, just ask us. They're warm and soft, like puppies and rocks, filled with cream and candy rocks. Oh, potatoes and molasses. They're so much sweet than algebra class. If your stomach is grumbling and your mouth starts mumbling, there's only one thing to keep your brain from crumbling. Oh, potatoes and molasses. If you can't see them, put on your glasses. They're shiny and large like a fisherman's barge. You know you've had enough when you start seeing stars. Oh, potatoes and molasses. It's the only thing left on your task list. They're short and stout. They'll make everyone shout for potatoes and molasses. That's enough. Father, is this what I've been paying for? Hey, we just wanted to have a little fun. I didn't invest in this school for fun. I thought we were trying to do important work here. Teaching animals to spell and count. We are. Oh, please, Father, don't close the school. It won't happen again. I should say it won't. Mr. Langtree begins grabbing instruments from the animals. This and this are all coming with me. Now send them to bed. You heard father. Get to bed with you. Cut to the schoolhouse dorm. Everyone is lying forlornly in bed. I just wanted to make the world, or I just wanted to have fun, change the world and make it a better place. I just made everything worse. Maybe never. Maybe I'll never give this up. Yeah, words right. Never give up. <clears throat> okay, if you say so. Come on. Greg, Bort, walk off into the forest. So, what's the plan, Greg? Plan? I don't know. Oh, who would have thought making a primer school for animals was a bad idea? Bort and Greg look over a bush. Langtree sits in a clearing with the instruments. My life savings, my home, everything I had went into that dear, dear school. And now I'm forced to sell these instruments to keep it open. Mr. Langtree removes his bulky overcoat, revealing a small, wiry frame. 
And all the while that loathsome Jimmy Brown is off gallivanting who knows where. Not to mention that wild gorilla on the loose. If only something would go right for a change. I think he's asleep. And snores. Okay, I think he's asleep. Let's go steal his stuff. What? Back to the morning when Miss Slipslang 3 wakes up and notices. <gasps> the instruments! They've been stolen! Who would do such a thing? A mid-tempo march plays. Huh? He looks through the bushes to see the animals playing their instruments for a crowd of people. Greg walks through the crowd and people put money in his hat chattering amongst themselves. A large barrel is already full of coins, and Greg dumps his in. What is this? It's a benefit concert for his school. Ah, uh, isn't it grand? All these fine people giving out of the goodness of their hearts? Not like my Jimmy Brown. Oh, uh, here we go. All he ever did was steal my heart away. Gorilla! Ah! The gorilla towers over Miss Langtree, roaring, and the crowd screams. Young man, do something! Uh, uh... Wirt shouts weakly and charges at the gorilla, but trips on his shoelace and knocks the gorilla over. Its head falls off. All gasp as a man groans and looks out from the suit. Finally. Jimmy? That's right, darling. I was the gorilla. But why did you do it? I got a job in the circus so I could finally buy you that wedding ring. When I got stuck in the dang suit, everybody was too doggone scared to help me out. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> darling. Jimmy and Miss Langtree embrace and everyone cheers. I guess the world really is as sweet as potatoes and molasses. Oh, potatoes and molasses. If you want some. So, one to tell Greg it's time to get it going? Nah, let him have his fun. Filled with cream and candy rocks. Any work? Yeah. Tie your shoe. Hmm? Oh, hmm, okay. Chapter Four, Songs of the Dark Lantern. It's raining, and we see the woodsmen walking and poking at the ground. No, stop, no! A wagon rides by going too fast. Oh no, the beast is upon me! Greg pops out of the hay bale in the back of the wagon and grabs a quacking duck. Greg, is there a beast out there? Greg looks around, then hides back in the hay with his brother. Found a duck. Do you know how to make eggs from a duck? I'm hungry. What about the beast? The beast is upon me! I didn't see any beast. That driver's nuts. Mm. Nuts. <sighs> That's good. Good. That crazy driver's taking us way off course. Really? Yeah, who knows where we are by now with that guy acting all bananas. Ooh, banana nut duck bread. Lightning strikes and the horse whinnies. The wagon takes a sharp turn and the gang gets thrown from the back, landing in front of a tavern. Whoa. Well, finally some good luck. Let's go to this creepy tavern and ask for some directions. But, but it's creepy. Why don't you guys go ask for directions and I'll just wait out here by myself. Wait, no, I don't want to be out here by myself. How about you guys? Just go to the tavern. Okay, but you ask for directions. Fine, yeah, I'll do everything. The group tries to enter the tavern, but the door won't open. Come on. It's stuck. Oh. Wirt looks down to see a big, fat dog laying in front of the door. 
Excuse me there, excuse me. The gang enters and looks around. It is indeed very creepy inside. They go to sit at a table. Greg pets his pet frog. You wait here, I'll go get some food. Well, uh, at least there's music. Well, hey there, Peach Pot. What you doing around? Hey, what's that bird you got there? It's, uh, I'm Beatrice. These two sweet kids and I got a bit lost in the- Woman hits Beatrice with a broom. Ah! No birds allowed in my cabin. No birds allowed in your- It's a bad omen when a bluebird enters through your door. It's bad luck. Lady, bluebirds are good luck. We bring joy and happiness to the- Woman hits her again with the broom. Ah! Good luck, bad luck, I don't need any of it. Curse you, lady, curse you. You'll die someday, and I'll laugh. Laugh. The tavern woman goes to hit Beatrice again, but Beatrice dodges the blow, and Wirt gets hit with the broom instead, and is knocked out of his seat. Whoa. Forget this. I'm out of here. Wirt, you get directions. Wait, no, I don't want to. Just do it. Beatrice flies out the door. Who are you anyway, bringing bad luck into my tavern? I am Wirt, and this is Gregory. Greg comes back with a plate of food. Greg stands on the table as a horse outside peeks in the window. And that's a horse. That's great. But who are you? I'm Wirt. I'm just a guy, I guess. What do you mean? Well, he's the butcher. I'm the butcher. The baker. Yeah. The midwife and the master and apprentice, the tailor, and I'm the tavern keeper. Who are you? I'm hungry. Uh, I don't know. I don't really like labels. I'm just sort of like myself, you know. Maybe he's simple. No, I, I'm. I'm just lost. See, we're trying to get to. I'm the highwayman. Okay. Good to know. Well, so you see, I'm the highwayman. I make ends meet, just like any man. I work with my hands. If you cross my path, I'll knock you out, drag you off the road, steal the shoes from off your feet. I'm the highwayman, and I make ends meet. The crowd cheers. Cut to Beatrice sitting outside on the horse. Hey, are you wearing lipstick? La 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 la. Huh? Who's out there? Chop the wood to light the fire. Okay, what kind of person goes out chopping cheese in the middle of a thunderstorm at night? What kind of person talks to a horse? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Back in the tavern, Wirt is sitting uncomfortably in a corner. He sighs and walks over to a guy laughing by the fire. Excuse me? Uh, I was wondering if you knew the way. Uh, I mean, um, her name is Adelaide and... Oh, it's a girl you're after, huh? No. I mean, yes. Oh, you're not the witless, simple-minded fool everybody takes you for. Everybody thinks I... You're the young lover. What? Young lover? No. Um... If you really want to get with this Adelaide gal. I don't. Well, here's what you gotta do. Write a loving letter, boy. The soups and sweeps and curls. Calligraphers are just the thing to help you win your girl. Then you'll need to dress up smart. The tailor's here by chance. He'll stitch your trousers, hold your belt, and find that you're a prance. Your shoes, my goodness, how they're worn. But you're too young to know. They're nothing but a woman's scorn. More than scuffs on the toe. The cobbler can attend to that. Meanwhile, you must have cake. The baker and the pasty. I need work, for goodness sake. Hi, dee, dilly, um, dee, dum, dee, day. What a merry time we'll have upon your wedding day. Hi, dee, dilly, um, dee, dum, dee, day. There's work for all when the tall boys get married. 
pointy thing upon your head. You can't be wearing that. The milliner will fix you up with a proper fine silk hat. The bride, of course, shall need a dress on that. We must agree. The seamstress, my young lover, oh, how grateful she will be. The rings by gum did I forget? Well, that's my favorite part. The vows, the whole romantic mess. Now that's a jeweler's art. And so you see our handiwork is yours if you're inclined. But our livelihood's at stake, so don't you go and change your mind. Hi, day, dilly, um, de um, today. What a merry time we'll have upon your wedding day. Hi, day, dilly, um, de um, today. There's work for all when little boys get married. Cut to Beatrice outside. If I have to be outside, then those jokers do too. Greg shows up at the window. Oh, hey, Beatrice. You want some food too? No. How's work doing getting directions? Mm, pretty good. What about that woodsman? I bet he knows these woods better than anybody, huh? All right, horse. Good riddance. Back in the tavern, everyone is cheering for work. No, oh, you guys. Adelaide isn't. I'm just. Yeah, love it. Sing us your song. Love song. Yeah, lover, sing us your love song. No, I don't. Lover, uh... sing. Sing, lover, sing. Sing, lover, sing. The midwife tosses Wirt onto the stage. <sighs> Oh, my name is Word, and his name is Greg. We're later because my mom married and then gave birth to him with my stepdad. We're not from around here. Can you all give me some directions today so we can be on our way? This ain't no love song. It's a metaphor. Keep it together, Taylor. Hey. Uh, yes? I know who you are. You're the pilgrim. What, like? The guys who eat turkey and cranberry sauce? No, you're a pilgrim. A pilgrim? You're a traveler on a sacred journey. You're the master of your own destiny. Huh. Hero of your own story. Pilgrim. Tell us your feats, pilgrim. All of the challenges you have overcome. Regale us with your travels, pilgrim. One time where it fell on a gorilla. Oh! And he helped me find this frog. Oh, more! Tell us more! And uh, uh, I met this helpful woodsman who told us which direction to go to avoid the beast. 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 Oh, you guys have heard of the beast too? Y'all know of the beast, pilgrim. <laughs> It lurks out there in the unknown, seeking those who are far from home, hoping never to let you return. Ooh, better beware. Ooh, the beast is out there. Ooh, better be wise and don't believe his lies. Once your will begins to spoil, he'll turn you to a tree of oil and use you in his lantern for to burn. Wait, lantern? The woodsman was a guy with the lantern, not the beast. Pilgrim, he who carries the dark lantern must be the beast. What? No, the woodsman's a good guy. He warned us of the beast and told us which directions to go to avoid him. And now you're more lost than ever, huh? Yeah, but... Oh, yeah. Hey, can you give us some directions? Our friends Beatrice is taking us to... Is going to take us to Adelaide for, of the pasture, the good woman of the woods. She can help us get, get home. You don't need directions, Pilgrim. You follow that compass inside your heart. Uh, no, I think we need directions. Ah! Beatrice! Go save your friend and get yourself home! Uh, okay. Yeah! Someone's outside. Oh boy, I guess I'm really doing this. Wart runs over to Fred the horse. Horse, I'm just gonna pretend like I can ride you, all right? Wart jumps onto the horse, grabs Greg, and rides off towards the woods. Beatrice! Beatrice! Another one of those trees. Halt! It's you! 
Hey, Mr. Woodsman. I told you to leave these woods. Mort sees Beatrice laying past style on the ground by the woodsman's feet. Beatrice, you're turning into an hello Featherwood tree. You were the beast all along. Mort blows out the light in his lantern, submerging them in darkness. Whoa. Fred the huh? rears up on his back legs and whinnies, startling the woodsman. Whoa. What's this? Greg, get Beatrice. Greg picks Beatrice up. The woodsman picks Ward up and slams him against the tree. What are you doing, boys? The beast is upon you! Ward kicks the lantern out of the woodsman's hand. It cracks open, setting the tree on fire. No! The woodsman stares at the burning tree in horror as the gang runs off into the woods. Beatrice wakes up. Uh, Beatrice, you're all right? Yeah. I just saw a weird shadow and then simply stupidly flew into a tree and got knocked out. Oh, well, we're all right now. Yeah, work was amazing. He sang a song and he rode a horse and he saved you from the axe guy. He's the pilgrim. It's all well and good, but you're supposed to get directions. Uh, I did. We just got directions from Fred before he woke up. Who? Uh, uh, Beatrice, meet Fred the horse. Nice, the horse, your acquaintance. You can talk? Cut to a shot of the woodsman, alone in the dark, getting ready to head back out. It seems you're running out of oil, woodsman. Why not let me take the lantern for a while? Be gone, beast. I fought you for the lantern before and I'll fight you again. No need for violence, woodsman. But to be sure to keep it lit, or your daughter's flame will go out forever. Now, what direction do those children go? You leave those children be! <laughs> Beast! Beast! La 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 la, chop the wood to light the fire. Chapter five, Mad Love. A flock of peacocks cry outside a spooky estate <laughs> in which our leaves are currently sitting at the dinner table with an eccentric old man. Yes, tea, that's my trade. Quincy Endicott's health tea. Your tea sounds good. Yeah. Never touched the stuff myself. <laughs> Me neither. Ah. Yes, it's all for the money. Yes, money takes my mind off my troubles, the deep, soul-crushing loneliness. Yes, the more money I make, the bigger my mansion gets, the more lost I feel. <sighs> Why, this house is so big, I sometimes don't even know where or who I am. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad your nephews here were able to pay you a visit. Yeah, yeah. Yes, what a... What a pleasure it is to have company. A perfect pleasure, a perfect pleasure, lads. Yes, yes, yes. Quincy and Greg climb onto the dinner table and begin dancing. A perfect pleasure. Perfect pleasure, Heather. Um, Beatrice, why are you pretending I'm this guy's nephew? We need money. You're scamming him? I was thinking more like flat out stealing from him. What? No way. Why not? We already stole a horse. Hey guys. No, we didn't. Fred's a talking horse. He can do whatever he wants. I want to steal. What? You guys are bonkers. If we're going to Adelaide's, we need two cents. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys do what you... Two cents? Only two cents? Yeah, we need two pennies to take the ferry to Adelaide's pasture. Ah, come on, everyone, let us retire to the parlor and enjoy my unnecessary excess of wealth and luxury. Quincy darts off with Greg on his back. 
Well, maybe he just has some loose change somewhere he wouldn't mind us taking. Behold, nephew, the majesty of wealth. Mm -hmm. What was that? Uh, what's wrong, Lunky Indicat? Your forehead's all sweaty. My nerves, my, my, my nerves. <laughs> my nerves are a bust these days. How come? Yes, yes, well, maybe it would be good to talk to someone. Well, you actually, it all, it all began one day when I was exploring my vast, exceedingly large labyrinthine mantha here. I happened to have a section of the whole building. It's a building. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Must have been the old wing. But it was lit in a rather sort of eerie, eerie light. And I, uh, I pressed on, and then I saw the painting of the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And that, that's when things took a rather, rather strange turn. From that day on, I was obsessed with the woman in the portrait. She, she consumed my every thought. I'd fallen in love with a ghost. <laughs> Fred spots a giant egg that rich people own. Ooh, go big, get a grip. Oh, I must sound crazy, mustn't I? Perhaps it's time for you all to leave my treasure-filled house. No! Yeah, Unky, I want to see the ghost. Oh, how I long to see her just once more as well, yes. To the painting! Yes! Yes! Quincy and Greg rush off to find the painting. Ooh, boy, ghost hunt! Fred, go with them. Find me some more time. While I'm at it, I'll steal other stuff, too! Fred follows the boys in search of the ghost. Glass shattering and rustling noises reveal that Wirt and Beatrice have totally trashed the room in an attempt to find two pennies. We're supposed to just be looking for loose change. That's what I'm... Oh. Beatrice knocks over a vase. Wirt catches it. Oops. That's what I'm doing. Well, let's not, let's try not to break any more. Accidentally knocks over the face he just caught. It shatters on the floor. <sighs> oh, hey, you didn't check the armor. The two hear a tapping sound. And it comes back. Hide. Wart and Beatrice duck into the armor, only for the tapping noise to be a peacock tapping its beak against the window. Back with Greg, Quincy, and Fred, they're walking down a long hall covered in pictures. Is that the portrait? No. Is that the portrait? Look, why don't I just tell you when we've reached the portrait? Okay. What's the matter, Unky? You seem tense. Uh, you know me well, nephew. Yes, the truth is I'm frightened. Of a ghost? Ghosts are just floaty things. Oh, no, 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 not afraid of me. I'm afraid of, what if there is no ghost? What if I'm on the, on the, on the brink of um, madness? Maybe the doctors were right. Come along, boys, back to the parlor. <laughs> the parlor? Why would anyone go to the parlor for? There's nobody in the parlor. Certainly nobody after your money. Yeah, no giving up now, old man. It's gotta be a ghost. But how can you be so certain? Because I want to see a ghost really bad. Oh. Back in the parlor, Beatrice and Mort are in the arm war. Okay, I, I think they're gone. Beatrice, you there? Uh, yes, smart guy. Start searching for change. Uh, I can't see anything. Mort shuffles the coats around. Well, I don't think these coats have pockets. Check the lining. Maybe somebody sewed money into the fabric. Mm, nope. Do people even do that? I've done it on mine clothes. You wear clothes? Like a little bird vest or something? <laughs> or vows? I was a human fool. You used to be a human? Did I know that? I don't think I knew that. Jiminy Cricket, let's just find some coins, all right? Open the door. Wart pushes at the armor door, but 
It doesn't budge. Talk. Well, I guess we have to spend some quality time together. How? Fred, Greg, and Quincy continue deeper into the manor. The greenhouse. This is where I grow my camellia for testing new teas. Perhaps we should uh, savor the quiet tranquility of this place. The group listens to the fountain flow for a moment before hearing a peacock tapping on the glass. It then crashes through the window. Ah, ghost! The peacock scratches back at Quincy. Ah, I can't do it! I can't do it! Well, Indica, it's just a funny chicken. Oh, yes. One of my prize-winning roasting peacocks. Yes, with all this love on my brain, I, I forgot to feed them. It's almost though I've lost my mind. We look for that after we find our ghost. Heave ho! Yes, yes, heave ho! It means for the abyss, never to return. Uh-huh. Anyone want to go back to the parlor? Back in the parlor, Mort and Beatrice are still in the armor. Hey, are you still there? Yes, we're, I'm still here. So, how did you become a bluebird? Hey, what's that? Don't change the subject. Hmm. Beatrice hops over to a crack of light and a gust of wind blows in her face. There's a breeze coming out of there. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Wart pushes on the crack and pulls back a panel to reveal a hole big enough for them to crawl through. A secret entrance. So, about your dark secret? Hey, how about you tell me your dark secrets instead? Hmm? My secrets are too secret. Hey, look, light. Whoa, now who's avoiding the question? You. I'm, I threw a rock at a bluebird and it cursed me and my family and now we're all bluebirds. Happy? Now you go. Whoa, your whole family? Yeah. Is that why you're going back to Adelaide's to fix things? That was the plan, but yeah, that was the plan. It'll all work out. All I know is I am never going back until I can make them human again. I do pretty much anything. All right, my turn, huh? Okay, well, it's weird to admit it, but well, I have this crush on this girl. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's all? And I think about her a lot, and I play the clarinet. Where? You have got to be kidding me. And I secretly whisper poetry to myself in my room at night. Where that stuff's not weird. Those are just, well, the poetry thing is pretty weird, but those are just character traits. You played clarinet? Sort of. What else do you do? The two crawl through the secret entrance and exit out of the fireplace. I don't know. Oh, hey, does this room look different to you? How so? It's like French Rococo style that doesn't really seem in line with Endicott's Georgian sensibilities. How, what? Who on earth am I talking to right now? Should I not that? Should I not know that sort of stuff? Endicott probably just built it without thinking, right? Or, um, yeah. What if the ghost he was talking about was actually... The other group is still wandering the gigantic halls of Indicott's estate, looking for the painting of the ghost. This, this is the room where I first saw her. Whoa! Just a bedroom? Just a bedroom, my nephew. This is the chamber of my own true love. And here she stands, hovering above us like the blinding sun. Hanging above them is the portrait of the woman they were looking for. Mm. No ghost. No, no ghost. But, but I am mad. Don't be mad. Greg stumbles across a spilled tea tray and knocks over a stool on one side of the room. Hey, what's this suspicious mess over here? It looks like there was a struggle. 
a violent struggle. What are you implying, my equine friend? Nothing, nothing. I'm just, Endicon is a crazed lunatic who did away with the lady of the house and now is pretending all in the place. What? Who do you think you are making false at you? I see it now. You're after my money. Do you know what I did for this money? The things these filthy hands have done to make this money? I'll never steal again. I swear I'll get an honest job. What say you, nephew? Uh, I'm confused. Well, then. A scream comes from the hallway and a woman's silhouette appears. She comes for me! Wait, Unky, face your fears. Woman enters the room. (sighs) Both Quincy and Marguerite faint. Shortly after, Quincy wakes up. Um, Mr. Endicott, are you all right? Ghost. Marguerite comes to. What do you want with me, spirit? But you're the ghost. My lady, I can assure you I am flesh and blood and I, I welcome you to my home. Your home? Good sir, you are in my home. Impossible. Look here, you see? Murray pulls the vines back on the wall to reveal a plaque that says Marguerite Gray Tea Co. This is my camellia garden for my tea company. Marguerite Gray? Why, with all due respect, madam, this is my tea garden. Quincy pulls back vines on the opposite wall to reveal a plaque that says Quincy Endicott brand tea. Quincy Endicott? Our guys' mansions are so huge, they're actually connected. So you mean that, that the beautiful ghost was really just... That dashing specter was really just... My business competitor? The two kiss. Outside the manor, the group prepares for the golden trio to head back into the unknown. Well, Greg, my boy, I can't thank you enough for helping me face my fears. You're a sweet boy, with a good sense. Take this penny and start your fortune. And here's one for me as well. Hey, nice, now we can ride the ferry. Well, everybody, I think it's time we head to Adelaide of the Pasture, the good woman of the woods. Um, what about you, Fred? Are you coming with us? No, thanks. I've got a real job now as an official tea horse. Well, then I guess that's it. Off you go, the lot of you. Goodbye. Goodbye. And don't forget to buy Endicott brand tea. The gang walks away from the manor and through the extensive grounds. Hey, Wirt. You did good back there. Yeah? You got a lot more going for you than I thought, huh? Hmm. As they pass the fountain, Greg throws the two pennies into it. A fish eats them. Greg, or pennies, why did you do that? Because Uncle Indicott pegged me all wrong. I got no sense. No sense at all. Chapter 6. Lullaby in Frogland. The boys and Beatrice are on a steamboat, making their way down the river. Yeah! Woo! Ah, what a nice way to spend our last day. Going to Adelaide's house. Our journey's finally over. Pretty soon I'll be back home. I won't have to worry about the woodsman or the beast or whatever. And you won't have to put out with us anymore. Bet you're pretty happy. Huh? Beatrice? Oh, yeah, sure. You all right? You sound uncharacteristically wistful. What? Sorry, just thinking. Hmm. Oh, we're going to the pasture to meet Adelaide and ask her if she has a way to send us back from where we came from. I don't know who she is or how she is. 
or when or what or why she is but as for where she is she is where we will go to adelaide to adelaide come on and join the adelaide parade to adelaide to adelaide we're going to adelaide's house today boy finally going home (sighs) hey what's with beatrice I don't know. What's with George Washington being naked? What? All the other frogs are dressed up nice. He's an outcast, and he's cold. Feel his cold feet. Um, no. He's supposed to be cold, Greg. He's a frog. He's our frog. Well, he's not my frog. Or she's not my frog. We don't really know its gender. Come on, George. You're a manly frog, and you need some socks. Who? Frog police walk on board. Huh? Uh Uh-oh. It looks like we're in trouble. It's because the president is nude. Probably because the guy snuck on without paying. Oh, yeah, but that's because Greg threw all our money away. Take him, not me. The gang goes running off, knocking into a frog waiter, causing him to drop his tray. Sorry. The chase continues. Wart knocks into a frog couple taking a picture and causes them to drop their tadpoles on the deck. Tadpoles! Your babies! Uh, Wart tries uh, to uh, pick up the tadpoles. The cops catch up to them and the boys take off again. They go hide in a storage closet and Wart comes out wrapped in a big cloak balancing Greg's frog on his head. Greg is disguised as a drum. Um, good, gentle, good day, gentlemen. We, I must be going now to join the band. We're drumming. Um, okay. Ow, 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 ow. Are we good? Yeah, I think so. Or sometimes you've got to face your problems. Turn yourself in and get kicked off this boat. Uh, I don't think today's a good day to get arrested by frogs. Hmm. Well, someone starts pushing Wart and Greg. Hey, hey, what's going on? Don't push me. The two get pushed on stage with the band. Okay, everybody, act natural. Drummy, drummy. I said act natural. It is natural. I'm a drum. The band begins to play. We're drummy, drummy in the face. Okay, okay, shh, don't draw attention to us. Wart lifts the stick to the drum and accidentally hits the frog bassoon player in the face, knocking him down, which causes a chain reaction of frogs falling. Whoa! Whoa! Uh Uh-oh, no bassoon player. The crowd of frogs starts yelling. Uh oh, dog, those frogs really love the bassoon. Wart sees the cop. Huh? Hmm. Oh no, Beatrice, I'm too young to go to frog jail. Hey, why don't you play the bassoon? Get us kicked off this boat for sure. No, Greg's right. You should play it. Go ahead. You'll do fine. You play instruments, right? Yeah, but bassoon and clarinet are way different. I don't have the embouchure for bassoon. I mean, the lower and middle ranges have some similarities in terms of... Wart, you can do it. Seriously, nobody wants to hear me play. I do. I do. Uh... Ribbit. Wart? Yeah, here we go. Wart picks up the bassoon and begins to play. Greg drums himself. Ow! Ow! At night when the lake is a mirror And the moon rides the waves to the shore A single song sets his voice singing Content to be slightly forlorn a song rises over the lilies. 
sweep the high to clear over the reeds and over the bulrushes swaying to pluck at a pair of heartstrings. Hey, Beatrice, thanks for supporting my bassooning. Yeah, you're actually good. <laughs> the best part is we're still on track to get to Adelaide. Yep, that's great. You don't seem thrilled. Well, I just, I don't want you to, never mind, never mind. Craig's frog stands up, causing Wart's coat to fall, exposing them. The crowd gasps. The frog cop blows his whistle. Um. Wart begins to play again. Two voices, now they are singing. Then ten as the melody soars. Round the shimmering pond, all are joining in song as it carries a reverie on. Over the treetops and mountains, over the blackened ravines, then softly it falls by a house near a stream and over the garden wall to thee. I knew you were special. Cut to the steamboat pulling up to shore later that night. The frogs all leave and go lay in the mud. What are they doing? It looks like they're hibernating in the mud. So, where's Adelaide's house? Is it close? It's... Hmm. We should probably just go tomorrow, I think. We don't want to bother her too late, you know? What are we supposed to do? Just sit around in the mud with these frogs? I call that mud over there. Greg runs and jumps in the mud. Yeah. Cut to work, Beatrice and Greg sitting around the fire. So, oh, then what? Well, then I want to talk to Sarah. I mean, like really talk to her, you know? Put all my cards on the table, you know? Yeah. And then Jason Funderburger comes out of nowhere and whisks her away. <sighs> oh, Jason Funderburger, that guy. Plus, Greg was around. He would have embarrassed me even more. Well, Bert, sounds like you're a real loser back home. Oh, thanks a lot. I mean, compared to how you are here, here you're like a hero and stuff, right? Am I? Well, I don't know if I'd say hero, but... You think I could be a hero too, huh? Greg looks over to where the other frogs are welcoming his frog into their community. They hand him a recording contract. You done good, Mr. President. You done good. If I was you, I wouldn't even want to go home. Yeah, but I, I can't stay here forever. Why not? Mm, why not? Because because I I can't just maybe it is better to stay here. Great. And it's agreed. Uh we're not going back to Adelaide's. Good night, Bert. Oh. What? Oh, good night, Beatrice. Later that night, Beatrice flies off as Ward wakes up. Beatrice? Greg, wake up! Huh? Beatrice took off. What? Come on. Ward runs off after her. Mm. Greg sees his frog getting fitted for socks. <sighs> Come on, Greg. I'm coming. Cut to Beatrice flying up to a cottage in the woods. She comes through the chimney to see an old woman in a witch hat playing cat's cradle. Close the flutes. 
the fresh air does gruesome things to my tender, delicate skin. Adelaide, we need to talk. Did you bring me what I asked for? I found two brothers lost in the woods, but I can't give them to you, Adelaide. They need to go home. Nonsense! I'll give them a wonderful home here. That's what you said, but... Can't you see I'm sick and helpless? A chew. I'm all alone in the world. I want a child servant. Servant? I thought you just wanted some yard work done. Our arrangement was for you to bring me a child servant. And then I give you the scissors to snip, snip, snip. Your family swings away and make them human again. What if I became your servant? <laughs> I need a big, strong child. You can turn me into a human, can't you? Oh, yes. Scissors. Yeah, yeah. So give me the scissors. I'll go help my family. Ward and Greg come in the door. Bert. Close the door. I'll catch my death of cold. Going on. You shouldn't be here. Adelaide? Welcome home, children. Adelaide uses her magic string to tie the brothers up. Beatrice, what? <laughs> but I thought we were friends. Now they're mine. And once I fill their heads with wool, they'll become just like little sleep and follow my every command. All along, you've been leading us to this crazy lady? I do as he commands. The voice of the night. The beast of eternal darkness. Beatrice pushes open the window, blowing out the flame of a candle on the windowsill. What are you doing? Night air is poisonous! Breathe it in, lady. Work, Greg, let's go. Deadly air! Whoa, oh, jeez, she wasn't kidding. It's precious! Huh? Beatrice Work? looks down, but the brothers are gone. Work? Greg? She goes outside, <laughs> coughing from the smoke. Greg, Wirt, it wasn't what it looked like. I was just, please come back. Oh. Cut to the brothers walking alone in the woods. Hmm. What about Beatrice? Hmm? I shouldn't have trusted anyone. For a bit. Oh, hey, Benjamin Franklin. Greg runs over and hugs his frog. Hurry it up, Greg. Chapter seven, the ringing of the bell. Thunder rumbles, it rains. Birds chirp as the boys walk through the woods. Where, what are we doing? We're walking, Greg. But where? A place to wait out this rain. Oh, but shouldn't we wait for Beatrice? I don't need Beatrice. I'll figure this out on my own. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you have a plan. Hey, Wirt. What? So what's this plan? Because you're not saying any details, so it's hard for me. Greg, I do have a plan, and if you don't trust me, then you don't have to follow me, okay? If you want to go look for Beatrice, go ahead. You can do anything you want. Anything? It's a lot of power. A tree falls and crashes in front of Wirt. Wirt? Oh no, did I knock that tree down with my powers? Sorry, are you okay? Yeah, that tree just came at me out of nowhere. Greg, look. Axe marks. Someone chopped it down. Indeed, twas I. Ah. The brothers try to run away, but the woodsman grabs work by the arm. Stop! Listen, the beast knows your presence. Ready to claim you as part of his dark forest, but only if you give up. Keep hardy in both body and spirit, and you shall be safe from him. Fall ill or lose hope. 
and your life shall pass into his crooked hands. Wart kicks the lantern from his hands and runs off. Ah, children, please heed my warning. Boys, beware the beast. Woodsman. Huh? The woodsman turns to see the beast lurking in the shadows. We should talk. Cut to the brothers running away. I think we lost him. You got him with the good old kickeroo. See, I got it under control. I don't need Beatrice. Now to find some place to wait out this rain. As long as it's not that old, broken down. Shh, it's perfect. Cut to an old shed-like house in the distance. Come on, Greg. Uh, Wart? Wart rushes off to the house, ignoring Greg. Ain't that just the way. Inside the house, Wart lights some candles. Hmm. This place is so bad, huh? Maybe. Greg spins in a circle with his frog and his out of your pants. Hey, he can do what he wants. What's with these old baskets? Whoa. What? We're rich. What? Look, We're it's full of black. Greg. Look, it's full of black turtles. We're turtle rich. You know, it's kind of funny finding a basket of turtles in an abandoned house, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Greg, not that kind of funny. Oh. Auntie? Young woman Auntie? comes in the door. Auntie, I finished sorting. <gasps> Who are you? We're burglars. No, 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 no. We're not. We're not. We just needed to get out of the rain and we thought this place was abandoned, so we. We came here to burgle your turrets. No, it's not true. It is true. Or <laughs> tackles Greg. Oh, okay, I give up. Ha, ah, see? I believe you, but please <clears throat> hide yourselves at once. Auntie Whispers is coming soon. What? Footsteps are heard. Hide quickly! hide as Auntie Whispers comes in the door. Lorna, my sweet child, has anyone come here today? Nay, Auntie, not a soul. Then no one shall be devoured alive tonight. Nay, I pray not, Mum. Cut to show Wart and Greg hiding in the baskets with the turtles. Devoured alive? You're a good girl, Lorna. But you deceive me. I speak the truth, Auntie, I swear. Deceive me not, child. I can smell... I smell children in this house. What? Children? I'm like in high school. Yeah, well, you stink. Shh. You shh. Tell me what you are hiding, precious one. I... The ringing of the bell commands you. Look in the basket. You have entered the house of doom, children. Your doom. Oh, my dear. Why, all along you meant it to be the turtles that smell so ripe. Uh, uh, I. That is what I meant. Mm. Then you have no evil secrets to keep? Nay, I have none. And off to bed I go, and you, Lorna, you shall sort the bones of those who have been eaten here before. I have finished already. And clean this floor until it shines. The ringing of the bell commands you. Yes, Auntie whispers. You know I do this for you, child. Keeping you busy is the only way to keep the evil spirits from driving you to wickedness. Do not worry, Auntie whispers. The work shall keep me busy. Good night, my dear. And douse that fire. I did not ask you to light it. Come, my turtles. She sleeps. 
the boys climb out of the basket. You're sure? I, I. <clears throat> um, are you all right? You've been coughing a lot. It's my illness. It's the reason Auntie Whispers is so hard on me. Gosh, that lady is so bad. You should go see a doctor. Auntie does not allow visitors here. She believes outsiders will lead me to become wicked. Yeah, see, that's super weird. I don't mean to insult your family, but... Oh, she's not my real aunt. Oh my gosh, see? Hey, where'd Dr. Cucumber go? Craig looks for his frog. Hey, I'm gonna get you. Greg chases after him. So you got to keep sweeping till you're done? Mm-hmm. The work never ends. By the time this task is complete, she will return and order me to a new task. And so it goes. If I help and we get the work done fast, maybe you can... Escape? With you? Uh, yeah. Can we escape with you too? Greg. Hmm. Yes. Uh, perhaps this time it could be different. Here. Um, I'll take that side. Hmm. Something weird is going on. Hey, where are you going? Montage of Wart and Lorna cleaning and smiling at each other. Greg's frog starts hopping up the stairs. Greg runs after him. Hey, you can run, but you can't hide. Paging Dr. Cucumber, you're needed in the operating Enters room. Enters on the whispers room. You're needed in the operating room. Oh no. Back downstairs. Well, looks pretty good. I think we're done. Oops. Greg and his frog come racing down the stairs, chased by Auntie Whispers. Why have you come here? You shan't remain alive for long in this house. Greg races over to Wirt. Ah. I am warning you, children. Keep away from my Lorna, or you shall be hastily gobbled up. We, we don't want no trouble, lady. Let's just talk it out. I I'm Wirt. Lorna, come here. Uh, uh, King of the bell. Oh, did I put it on my nightstand? Follow me. They all run into a closet and lock the door. No! Come out before it's too late. Unlock the door. She will devour you. What is she talking about? <laughs> The boys turn to see that Lorna has turned into a monster. Ah! More bones to sort. I told no. you boys to stay away from her, but now you've gone and made her wicked again. Oh, for some reason I thought the old lady was the people eater, but it was Lorna all along. Just goes to show you stuff. Now I have a plan that'll Wirt covers Greg's mouth. Ugh. Wirt throws the two of them out the window. Ha, your plan was better. Lorna crawls out after them. I'm sorry, my turtles, but I must feed. The boys run away. They trip and fall into a river. Greg sinks under the water. Greg, let's try my plan now. Lorna approaches moaning like a ghost. Greg picks up his frog and begins to wave him back and forth, the bell glowing from inside his stomach. The ringing of the bell commands you. What the? Oh, he ate the witch's magic bell when we were... Fight, do something. Uh, I command you to... The spirit compels me. Transform into a magical tiger. What? No. <laughs> Mark uh, grabs the frog and waves it. The ringing, the ringing of the bell commands you. Stop making Lorna do bad stuff, spirit. Ah! And also go away and don't come back. Ah! 
An evil spirit leaves Lorna's body. She collapses to the ground. Lorna, Lorna, where, look. The spirit roars in the sky, then vanishes. Lorna. Where? You saved me. Lorna, Lorna. Auntie Whispers walks up to them. Oh my Lorna. Auntie Whispers. I thought they'd stolen you away. No, Auntie. They saved me. They, they banished the evil spirit with the power of the bell. Yeah, you can have the back after Greg Jr. goes to the bathroom. Oh, Lorna. That's wonderful, dear. Auntie Whispers, what's wrong? Well, now that you're cured, you won't be needing old Auntie Whispers to look after you anymore. Oh, Auntie, no. Oh. Lorna hugs Auntie Whispers. I would never leave you. You are my family. Thank you so much, Wirt. And a bit of advice. Beware of my sister, Adelaide. She lives in the pasture. She must not be trusted. Perhaps I'll, I'll see you again someday. I hope so. Auntie Whispers and Lorna walk off together. Smell you later. Wow, we're, you saved the day twice today. Yeah, I guess. Oh, what? We're still not any closer to getting home. I just don't know what I'm doing out here anymore. I don't know if we'll ever get back home. Sure we will. What can stop us? You got a plane, remember? Oh, I... Oh, come on. Let's go, Captain. Lead the way. You can do it. The two of them walk off into the woods. The beast appears behind them in the shadows. Yes, yes. All hope will soon be lost. We're lucky the boy had the pluck to best you. The beast turns and looks at the woodsman behind him. Your play could have cost us both. Don't you care about keeping the lantern lit? Don't you care about your daughter's soul? One cannot trade the souls of children as if they were tokens. There has to be another way. There is only me. There is only my way. There is only the forest. And there is only surrender. Chapter 8. Babes in the Woods. Beatrice flies through the mist and lands on a branch. She looks around, forlorn. Cut to a shot of the brothers and the frog paddling along in a wooden crate. Home. 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 Home could be around any corner. Tra la la la. Tra la la la. Hey, Captain, do you hear that singing? Not you, Skipper. I'm talking to the Captain. Captain Wirt, do you know who's singing? I don't know much of anything anymore. Oh. Do you know that the dinosaurs had big ears, but everyone forgot because dinosaurs' ears don't have bones? No, I did not know that, Greg. That's because it's not true. It's a rock fact. Tra la la la. The beast. It must be the beast out there. The obsidian cricket over inevitable twilight singing a requiem. Mm, yeah, must be a really fat cricket. The crate they're in hits land. Greg takes out a trumpet and plays. Look, we reached land. Feel the dirt. Smell that tree. We must almost be there. They get out of the crate and start walking again. Greg? Yes, we're. Can we stop pretending we're going to get home? Huh? Can we admit we're lost for good? That this fog is deeper than we can ever understand. That we're but wayward leaves scattered to the air by an indifferent wind. Can we just admit we're never going to get back home, Greg? Can we do that? Or you can do anything if you set your mind to it. That's what the old people say. Well, then let's do that. 
Yes, sir, Captain. Craig, you need to stop acting ridiculous all the time. Huh? Look, do you even know why we got lost in the, in the first place? Because you were goofing around and getting into trouble like you always do. Really? It was all my fault? Yeah, so it's not my job to get us home, okay? I'm done. Are you saying I should be the leader? I don't care what you do. But if, I, if I'm a leader, what are you going to be? I'll be asleep. Mort lays down by a tree. Wow. Okay, well, then I better take a nap, too. I need to dream up a good way of leading us home. Craig covers Wirt with a blanket of leaves. Thanks for trusting me, Wirt. Craig lays down beside him. Don't worry. I won't let you down. I'll be a good leader. Good night. The frog lays down by Craig. Star. Oh, star up in the sky. Guide my dreams with light that shines. Help me know just what to do to get work home and me too. And if you don't, I don't care. I'll pull down your underwear. Up above, stars twinkle and a golden light shines through. Creepy little cherubs smile down on the sleeping brothers. Hey. Greg huh? comes out of his body. Huh? Whoa. Greg flies up into the sky with the cherubs and rides on a flying wagon pulled by a magic donkey. A blinding light shines above. Whoa. The cherubs and donkey lead Greg over the bridge to Cloud City. Many whimsical cloud creatures join them. Whoa. Hey, Greg. Nice to see you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Cloud City. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Greg. What are yours? We're the Cloud City Reception Committee, and we are here to welcome thee. Oh, wow. Neat. And we're the Cloud City Auxiliary Reception Committee. And we are also here to welcome thee. Thank you. And we are the Hippopotamus, Giraffe, and Monkey, and we are committee number three. Okay, are there more? Up to a shot of a creepy cloud dog with a rain cloud over its head. Well, that's enough. So what brings you to Cloud City? Well, I'm supposed to be a leader, but I don't know how. Why, Why don't you lead our band in a song? Okay. Everything is nice and fine all the time. The softest clouds and rainbow skies ain't gonna lie. We always have the most spectacular time together. Everyone is sitting pretty on top of the weather. Lasso a cloud and make the flowers grow. Tie them in a bow to throw at the end of the show. Our songs are filled with love, the sweetest love. Then we can send them down to you with a little shove. So hitch a ride into the sky. Join our band. Bring harps and lutes, kazoos, trombones, and flutes, or just your pots and pans. We can write a little jig out on the mighty blue, and we will be here just for you. Craig bounces around the clouds, but then accidentally hits a gate with a do not enter sign on it. Thunder crashes. Oh no! The north wind is loose! The creatures run away screaming as dark cloud creatures come through the gate, followed by a big gray cloud creature. Oh yeah, the old north wind starts to howl, puffs up and furls his brow. Now, now, you better take cover. Lock up those doors and close the shutters. I said the old north wind. Yes, he is. He's gonna fight. He's gonna spin. He's gonna pull back. 
Blow a little more until you can't tell what you came here for. Oh, yeah, the old north wind. Yes, indeed. He's going to breathe and breathe and breathe. He's going to blow, blow till you can't feel no more. Cut back to reality or a storm brewing in the woods as the boys sleep. Beatrice flies above searching for them. Or, Greg, is anybody out there? Back in Cloud City, the north wind is tormenting the cloud creatures. The north wind. <laughs> I don't like that. That makes me mad. The north wind begins to chase Greg. They fight. Greg stuffs the north wind into a bottle and the cloud creatures cheer. A golden light shines down above Greg, and a beautiful woman appears. Huh? Why, hello, Gregory. Hello. I am the queen of the clouds. Thank you for saving my city. You're welcome. I shall grant you one wish. What do you wish for most of all? Well, I'm supposed to be the leader, but I don't know how to get home. Do you know? Of course. If you wish, I can certainly send you home. Great. Let's go get work. I'm sorry, Gregory, but Wirt cannot go with you. He is too lost. But anything is possible if you set your mind to it, right? The Queen of Clouds conjures a vision of Wirt sleeping back under the tree. The branches have begun to engulf him. See how the Adelwood grows around him? The beast has claimed him already. I should have been leading better. I was goofing off again, like always. And now you're stuck here. Isn't there anything I can do? I'm sorry, Gregory. Wirt's fate lies solely in the beast's hands now. Then I know what to wish for. Greg beckons the queen closer and whispers in her ear. Are you sure? And it shall be done. Greg appears back in reality and walks over to his brother where he still sleeps under the tree. The vines and leaves have begun to mold around Wirt's body. Hey, hey Wirt. Trying to sleep. Okay, you sleep. I'm sorry I lost Wirt. Will you take care of Ronald for me? Okay, I have to go now. Goodbye, Wirt. Yes, come, Gregory. There is much to be done. And then you'll show us the way home, right? Of course. We made a promise, didn't we? Greg, 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 where did he go? Ra la la la. No, 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 Greg. What the heck? Tra la la la, tra la la la. Isn't much that I require. Greg. Work gets up and chases after the sound of the beast. What did I do? Greg, Greg. Wart runs and trips, hitting his head. His ears begin to ring. He gets up and runs again, then crashes through the ice over the frozen pond and begins to drown. A fishing net is cast over Wart as he begins to be pulled from the freezing water. Oh, you got him. Pull, pull. Is he alive? Wart. Wart, Wart. Right. Wirt, are you okay? Wirt. Craig, I, I. Where's Craig? Wirt. Beatrice. Chapter nine. Into the unknown. Wirt sits on a bed in a normal house in a more normal looking world. He paces back and forth looks at a tape recorder and takes out a tape. 
and throws it against the wall. The label on it reads, for Sarah. He picks it back up, then goes and puts on a red hat and a blue cloak. He looks at himself in the mirror. Yes. Mort leaves his house. It is Halloween night. He holds the tape in his hand. Into the unknown. Cut to word at a high school football game. Greg walks over from across the street. Goodbye. Thank you, old lady Daniels. Goodbye, Gregory. And please don't call me old lady. Yes, sir, young man. Hey, Wirt, what you doing? Nothing. I was helping old lady Daniels rake some leaves in exchange for candy. Greg, it's Halloween. Candy is free. Old lady Daniels says nothing in this world is free. Oh, hey, and look, I also got this rock. Hey, Wirt, want to learn some rock facts? Ford ignores him and watches the game. So you want to go look for frogs with me like you said you would a while ago and you haven't done it yet? No, no, I'm busy. Is that bee named Sarah? What? Your tape says for Sarah. Are you going to give it to Sarah the bee? I want to, but I can't. Can I see it? Yeah, it's just a tape. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll give it to her for you. Oh, Greg, wait, wait, no. no. Greg runs off towards Sarah. Uh, look, what are you supposed to be? It's an elephant costume. See my trunk? Yeah, that's cute. I'm an egg. Everybody knows you're an egg, Rondi. Shut it, Kathleen. Whatever. So what are you, Wirt? Some kind of gnome? Uh, I, I don't know. Well, it's, see, I was... I thought I just, like... Hey, what's this? That's where it's taped for Sarah. Ooh, where it loves Sarah. You want us to give it to her for you? Oh, it's for a different Sarah? Not the one you're thinking about? Yeah, where it's talking about mascot Sarah. The one he's been looking at all night. <laughs> what? Oh, where it's got a crush on Sarah. Well, you better act fast, because we heard Jason Funderburger is going to ask her out to have a Halloween party tonight. Jason Funderburger? Yeah. But I, I just, but. <clears throat> you okay, word? Yeah, everything's, everything's Jason Funderburger. What? Uh, uh, Jason Funderburger, I, I gotta go. Bye. Cut to word walking down the street alone and Greg chasing after him. Please, the dove never to meet the sea for want of the odious mountain. Hey, so frog hunt? Huh? I keep hearing riveting around town. I think it's the last frog of the season. No, I just want to wallow in misery. Sarah and Jason Funderburger. Ugh, that guy's got his act together. He's a total package. I can't compete. You're the total package too, Word. I bet she'll really like your tape. We never got the tape back. I can't let her hear that tape. Why not? That tape has poetry and clarinet on it, Greg. Poetry and clarinet. Sarah and Jason Funderburger are going to start dating and then they'll hear that tape and they'll just sit and listen to it and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. Why don't you ask Sarah out first? That way. No, no. Ugh. Why do you have to take the tape? I love this from the I think we should put our frog hunt on hold to get that tape back. Cut to the brothers back at the football game. Uh, guys, where's the tape? We put it in Sarah's jacket for you. Ah. Uh. You better hurry. She's changing in the track shack. Greg and Wirt raced to get Sarah's jacket. The jacket? Hey, you trying to spy on Sarah? Uh. No, Ron, Greg. Sarah comes out and grabs her jacket. Hey, Sarah, be careful, huh? There's some real creeps out there tonight. Thanks, Jimmy. Sarah gets on her bike and rides off. Cut to a shot of a cop car waiting at a stop sign. Two boys dressed as robbers make their way across the crosswalk. Hey. 
You two robbers, you're under arrest. No, I'm just kidding. Happy Halloween. Sarah rides by on her bike. Wirt and Greg chase after her. Hey, stop running in the streets. Just kidding. Happy Halloween. Sarah rides her bike up to a house hosting a Halloween party. The boys follow. There she goes. Let's get her. Yeah, let's get her. No, we're not going to get her. Well, then what are we doing? We're just going to get the tape back. Oh, yeah. Let's go in after her. And I wasn't invited to this party. Okay, I'll go in. You weren't invited either. Oh. Trey goes into the party anyway. Goes and watches at the window. Are you talking to them? Greg points to where Word is watching at the window. Everyone turns and looks. Uh, oh. Inside. oh, hey, guys. I, I don't know what he said, but it, it wasn't true. Oh, hey, Word. How's it going? Uh, yeah, well, see you guys. See you around, guys. Cut to the kitchen where Sarah is talking to another party goer. I used to be really good at ballet, but my mom wanted me to be a wrestler. Word bumps into Sarah. Oh, Bert, you're here. Well, I... I was just asking if you were here. Oh, well. Oh, hey, we're going to go to the graveyard. Oh, are you going to do something there? And we're just going to hang out and drink age-appropriate drinks. Like juice? Yeah, whatever. Age-appropriate stuff that's not illegal. Hey, you should come. Oh, I don't. Hey, Sarah, are you ready to go? Hey, Jason Frenderberger. Oh, hey, Wirt. Let's go, Sarah. You coming, Wirt? Uh, no, no, you, you go have fun with Jason Frenderberger. Okay, but if you want to stop by later or something. Bye, Wirt. They leave. Sayonara, Jason Fenderberger. <gasps> Sorry, jacket. My jacket. Thanks, Wirt. Well, see ya, hopefully. Bye. <sighs> Cut to Sarah, Jason, and some other teens heading into the graveyard. You're limiting the universe to only things that humans could understand. Well, you're limiting the universe by limiting the possibility of human understanding. Oh, yeah, maybe. Zara? Yeah? Do you believe in ghosts? Why? Because there's one right behind you. Oh, I'm just kidding. It's okay, Thunderbugger. Bert and Greg appear at the entrance to the graveyard as the other teens walk. Come on. Bert. Bert, you tricked me. I didn't know this was a frog hunt all along. It never was a... <gasps> Greg gasps and points. The other teens are sitting away off between some graves. A witch is gathering. And so then, a guy with an axe showed up. Ugh, everybody loves Thunderburger. What do I do? I'll pretend to be an elephant and distract him while you get the tape. We just stay here. So we keep getting closer. Thunderbirker puts his hand on Sarah's knee. Mm. Go, Greg. Do it. Okay. Uh, you can let go of my hand now. Oh, uh, yeah. You can hold my hand, Thunderbirker. I don't care. Greg comes up through the grapes, howling and waving his teapot around. Hey, isn't that Wart's little brother? No, I'm the headless elephant. <laughs> Is Wart here too? Over there. Wart gasps and hides behind the tombstone. 
we're we can see you, man. <sighs> oh, hey guys, Greg, there you are. Totally wasn't spying on anybody. I was just looking for police siren whales. What's going on here? Huh? Is this some kind of witch is gathering? You're all under arrest. Run! The kids all take off. Hey, I was just kidding. Slow down, kids. You're gonna trip or something. Run, run, run! Where do we go? That way. The brothers come to a brick garden wall. Greg, why do you say this way? I thought I heard a frog. The cop car pulls up. This is private property. Uh, Ward and Greg begin to climb a tree by the wall. Hey, don't climb up there. That's dangerous. Get down here before you hurt yourself. Ward and Greg reach the top of the wall. Wart looks over to see Sarah and Jason amidst the tombstones. Sarah takes Wart's tape out of her pocket. Huh? It has my name on it. <gasps> Let's go listen to it! No. Kids, really get down from that wall. That's it. That's the end. Wart and Greg hop off the wall and into the unknown. No, darn it, I meant come down this way. The brothers land on the other side of the wall. Once again, you ruined my life. Who, me? You and your stupid dad, you're always prodding me, trying to get me to join marching band. Oh yeah, if you join marching band, you can hang out with Sarah more. That ship has sailed. Greg, thanks to you messing that up too. <laughs> Hold that thought, Wart. Greg runs off into the bushes. What are you doing now? Ha! Ah, we found our lucky frog. We gotta name him for good luck. I don't want to have anything to you to do with you or that frog. Okay, I'll try to think of a name myself. I'm leaving. The sound of a train approaches. The two boys realize they're standing on train tracks. Mm hmm. Huh? Train whistle blows as it gets closer. Ah! Ward and Greg jump from the tracks and tumble down the hill. Cut to Ward waking up in a nest of birds deep in the woods, back in the present timeline. Uh, where? Um. Oh, you're awake. Here, eat some dirt. Uh, Beatrice? You know my daughter? Where is she? I don't know. Hmm. Somebody left you and that frog on the doorstep. Beatrice, but have you seen my brother? No, I'm sorry. Oh, I gotta go. You are in no shape to head into that snowstorm, young man. Here, here, eat some more dirt. Thanks. Uh, come on, guy. Let's go find Greg. At least wait until the storm dies down a bit. You'll be no good to your brother dead. I was never any good to him alive either. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you see Beatrice again, give her a hug for us. Chapter 10, Over the Garden Wall. Beatrice flies through the snowstorm. She sees footprints up ahead. Oh, Greg? Did you fetch me the golden comb? Uh, will that work? This is a honeycomb. Golden comb of honey. <laughs> Greg! The huh? snowstorm blows Beatrice away. Never mind that, Gregory. You've brought me the first two items. A golden comb and a spool of silver thread. It's just spiderweb on a stick. Now, I want the sun. 
The sun? Here. Lower the sun out of the sky and into this china cup. Uh, well, that sounds impossible. Anything is possible if you set your mind to it, right? But hurry. The sun will be setting soon. Oh, hey, that's it. Greg walks over and places the cup on a stump. Da, da, da. See? The old sun's going right down into this old cup. You have figured it out. And I thought you might give up. Give up? I'll never give up. I just gotta wait. Got to wait. Yes. Just sit in the cold and wait. Cut to word walking in the snowstorm. Huh? Beatrice flies right into Greg's face and then crashes into the snow. Ah! What the? Beatrice? Where? Beatrice, what are you doing out here? I saw Greg. What? I saw Greg. He was with someone. This way. Or, wait, um... Um, Beatrice, you should go home. I can't. Not yet. Not until Greg is safe. Okay. We should hurry. I, I think it was that way. Thank you, Beatrice. Cut to the woodsman's house. He's looking around for something. Here, Edelwood. You see? This will give us some oil, won't it? Yes, we'll keep that light of yours shining, won't we? Come on. Tra la la la. Oh. The woodsman heads out into the snow to where he hears the singing coming in the distance. Darkness, there is light for the lost and the meek. Sorrow and fear are easily forgotten when you submit to the soil of the earth. The woodsman reaches where the beast lurks in the shadows. Woodsman, I knew you would come. I have something for you. The beast gestures to where Greg is now beginning to be consumed by the Edelwood tree. Oh, oh, what have you done? Why, I've given you another Edelwood. No! He will burn nicely in the lantern. No, I won't do this. You've been grinding up lost souls for years. I didn't know. I didn't know this is where the Edelwood trees came from. And would it have mattered? Would you have just let your daughter's spirit burn out forever? Feed the lantern. No. I suppose after all these years, you just don't care for her anymore. Hold your tongue or I'll remove it from your mouth. Do not speak of my daughter. She would not wish this. The woodsman walks over to Greg. Let's get you free. The woodsman begins to pull the branches away from Greg as the beast shadow reaches for the lantern. No! I only wish to help you, woodsman. You need oil, or else your daughter. The I told you to. No. The beast. I told you to hold your tongue. He swings at the beast. But the beast just laughs and fades away into the shadows. The woodsman chases after him into the darkness. Greg, Greg. I thought it was this way. A light. A lantern. It looks like the woodsman's. The two look at all the mangled trees. Whoa, what happened here? Work Greg. sounds where Greg is stuck in the branches of the Edelwood tree. Greg, Greg, are you... Work? Oh, Greg. Work, I did it. I beat the beast. <coughs> oh, geez. The leaves are even growing inside of him. No, I was just eating leaves. I'm sorry, Work. No, 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 Greg. It's my fault. We ended up here. Everything's been my fault. I should have been more... No, I mean my rock facts rock. What? what? I, I stole it. We're, 
I stole it from Miss Daniel's garden. I'm a stealer, and that's a rock fact. What? No, Craig, that, that doesn't matter. <coughs> it does matter. You have to return it for me, okay? No, you can give it to her yourself. Come on. We go to get Jason Funderburger home, right? Jason Funderburger. The perfect prop name. <sighs> Craig closes his eyes and drips off. Craig? Craig? Let's get him out of this. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Come on. It's going to be fine, Mert. The beast tosses the woodsman's limp body down in front of him. Give me my lantern. Your lantern? No way. We need this thing. Yeah, I'm keeping this. I have to get Greg home. Your brother is too weak to go home. He will soon become a part of my forest. I won't let that happen. Well, then perhaps we better make a deal. Deal? Oh, no. I can put his spirit in the lantern. As long as the flame stays lit, it will live on inside. Take on the task of lantern bearer, or watch your brother perish. Come here. Okay. Bert. Where it walks towards the beast, then stops. Wait, that's dumb. What? That's dumb. I'm not just going to wander around in the woods for the rest of my life. I'm trying to help you. You're not trying to help me. You just have some weird obsession with keeping this lantern lit. It's almost like your soul is in this lantern. Are you ready? To see true darkness. Are, <clears throat> are you? Don't. Don't. <sighs> Here, Woodsman, I've got my own problems to take care of. This one's yours. My brother and I are going home. It was never in the lantern, was she beast? Listen, woodsman, listen to me. Or it lifts Greg onto his back. Come with us. I, I gotta go home too. Admit to my family that it's my fault they're bluebirds. <clears throat> what? The scissors. They'll make your family human again. You had them all along? I used them to escape Adelaide and, and then, yeah, I was sort of mad at you. Oh, you wonderful mistake of nature. You see, woodsmen, all who perish here will become trees for the land. Cut them down with your ax. Go, now. No. Stop. You'll never see your daughter again, Woodsman. Are you really ready to go back to that empty house? No! Woodsman! The Woodsman blows out the lantern and there is only darkness. Goodbye, Beatrice. Goodbye, Word. Cut to Word, back in the regular world. He and Greg are drowning in the pond at the bottom of the hill. Wart wakes up and drags him and Greg back to shore. They see a light in the distance. Help. Wart! The group of teens rush over to help. Cut to Wart and Greg passed out in an ambulance. Then to Wart waking up in the hospital. Wirt, you okay? Can you see me, Wirt? Mm, where am I? The hospital. Ho hospital? Greg, where's Greg? 
cut to Greg standing in the hall with his frog, talking to the other teens. And then we're, I was just telling them about the time we almost got, or, yeah, you were there too, Jason Funderburger. Me? No, not you, Jason Funderburger, my frog. Our frog. Our frog. Our frog. No, not your frog. Hey, so about this. Uh, yeah, so I don't have a tape player, so. Oh, yeah. So maybe we can listen to this. You can listen to it at my house. Yes, maybe. Maybe we should listen to some other tapes first, though, and sort of work our way to this one. This one is a little bit. Ah, yeah, I mean, you can listen to it. And so the story is complete. And everyone is satisfied with the ending, and so on and so forth. And yet, over the garden wall, cut back to the woodsman's house. He sits on his porch, four lonely, and the door opens. And his daughter steps out. Father? They embrace. Cut to a shot of a human Beatrice looking out the window. Honey, eat your dirt. Mom, stop calling it dirt. What are you gonna do about it? Turn us into bluebirds again? Mom. Now eat your dirt. <laughs> Let through the mist by the milk light of moon all that was lost is revealed our long bygone burdens miracles of the spring but where have we come and where shall we end if dreams can't come true then why not pretend? How the gentle wind beckons through the leaves as autumn colors fall. Dancing in a swirl of golden memory, the loveliest the end of Over the Garden Wall! Give it up for our cast. Give it up for the ensemble, me, Kate, and Liz. For our wonderful narrator, Nori. For Beatrice, played by Emma. Greg played by River and give it up for work played by Mar. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you to all our new cast members. Make sure you all follow us on Instagram at Theater But Better and join us next month on April 23rd where we will be doing the 1988 classic Beetlejuice. Thank you guys so much for coming with us into the unknown and we will see you next time. Goodbye.